Let's bust some hair care mess. You want to? Yep. So as a chemist and a trichologist, we both hear a ton of fear mongering about silicones. Do you like silicones in hair care? Tell I us why you love them. I was, okay, I thought so. Yes. So tell us why you love silicones in hair care. Yeah. Silicones are my favorite because they are the best conditioning protective agents that are also lightweight. Right. Which confuses me because they've gotten this bad rap for being heavy and causing right. buildup. I think people, when they hear like dimethicone, they're picturing those silicone patches or something, or like yeah. a silicone spatula. They think yeah. it's like a Thick. This is dimethicone, see? And this is cyclopentasiloxane. These are two very common silicones used in hair care products. Y'all, if you're worried about wax buildup on your hair, it's not coming from these ingredients. Granted, they are not water soluble, so if you do use a lot of silicone rich products and you're not using a good shampoo, they could build up. And maybe certain viscosity dimethicone could contribute to like a little heavier of a feel. Sure. But that's but, not because of a silicone, that's because of a specific ingredient. Right. Like we can't demonize all of them no. for what one might do. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the worst that's gonna happen from that is that it's just not gonna feel the best in your hair. Right, right? yeah. It's not yeah, like yeah. it's doing anything <laughs> it's bad to your hair. It's not gonna do anything hair. bad to your hair. Right, I right. I somebody say that it suffocates their hair. No, your hair is dead. It doesn't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> right? Yeah. I hear that silicones are gonna make your hair fall out, they're gonna suffocate your hair, they're going to damage your hair, they're gonna make your hair break off. What else? I mean, the I hear suffocating everything. one kills yeah. me because, no. like, it's dead. Yeah. Your hair's dead. Your hair's dead. <laughs> it can't breathe. I hear it a lot with skincare because people are like, oh, silicones are gonna suffocate your skin or that they're gonna feel really heavy on your skin. And again, some of the lightest weight ingredients that exist are like cyclopentasiloxane. And there are certain weights of dimethicone or cross polymers that are a little heavier. And mm -hmm. I understand that, but you can't demonize the whole ingredient class as a whole. And so when we were developing Sake Bomb, we used a lot of silicones specifically so that that moisturizer would be so lightweight for even the oilier skin types. Mm -hmm. Because that is just the nature of silicones. They are permeable to water vapor and air. So nothing's getting suffocated. Like when you're, when you're talking about hair, it doesn't matter because it's no, dead, but no. your skin's not getting suffocated. They can be very light, provide incredible texture. For hair, silicones actually form a coating or a film around it, and that sounds like it may be a bad thing. That kind of sounds like, oh, it's gonna smother your hair, suffocate it, but that is what actually protects it. Right. So silicones condition, provide heat protection, UV protection, they detangle, they right. make it easier to brush through. I mean, the list goes on. It's so funny because people, I feel like, always pick out these ingredients to demonize, yeah. and the way they phrase what's wrong with the, the ingredient is usually how formulators are intentionally trying to make the conditioner. When you're making a conditioner, first of all, your hair's dead, so the best you can do is put a protective layer that's gonna make it less likely to break off when you brush, mm -hmm. make it easier to comb through, kind of get rid of some of that frizz. So you can use ingredients like cationic conditioning ingredients like guars and stuff that mm -hmm. are gonna adhere to the surface charge on hair. Again, like you want the fatty alcohols that are gonna give it that nice, creamy, waxy kind of protective layer. Another ingredient that I do really like, you know, we, we can talk about positively charged ingredients and fatty alcohols. This is a blend of behentrimonium chloride, sterile alcohol and steryl alcohol. With ingredients like this, you're getting the conditioning benefits of the fatty alcohols and then the substantivity of the cationic ingredient. What I think is so interesting sometimes is when people are demonizing a particular drugstore conditioner like Pantene, People tend to say it's the silicones leaving a waxy buildup. You've got the silicones, that's dimethicone. This is the sterile alcohol, sterile alcohol, benzoyl chloride. If anything in that formula is contributing to a buildup, it's probably gonna be this. What's funny is the same ingredient that is in that Pantene conditioner that could potentially cause waxy buildup is also what's in the Swella one. And people will say like, oh, but the professional brands, are they're better. Sure, they might be formulated better, but they might not be. I was working at a contract manufacturer where I specifically remember I had developed a formula that was going to a drugstore conditioner. And like the next week we had a big brand come in that was like a professional grade. We used a very similar formula for the two. The professional grade brand, though, they did have a certain ingredient they wanted me to use, but they only asked me to use it at 0.1% because they just wanted it for marketing claims. So my point Dang. is there are some higher end shampoos and conditioners that are worth the money, but across the board, they're using a lot of the same ingredients, same raw materials, and you might have a chemist that has done almost an identical formula for the two. These are very similar. 
And I love hearing that because that is kind of the hunch I've had that we're yeah. getting the same exact kinds of things in high-end brands that we are drugstore brands. I think maybe you just get sometimes a more elevated experience in the high-end yeah. packaging and the smell and the how the texture Very feels. Fair. But at the end of the day, the ingredients that are gonna benefit your hair are typically pretty much the same yeah. in both. Yeah. And so you really can get the same benefits that you get professionally at the drugstore. Right, sure, there might be some drugstore products that are horrible. Yeah. There may also be just as many high-end products that are horrible. Yes. I guess we can make the exception for certain high-end brands that have mm -hmm. patented ingredients. There are some of those, like K18, that yeah. I genuinely, after using that reparative mask, I swear like three times, I thought Jesus himself had come down and like blessed my hair. <laughs> It was You've got crazy. A whole new set of hair. That is the only product I've ever used, either skin or hair, that I was like, this changed my life. I love that K18 mask. I yeah. actually like it better than Olaplex. I feel Me like. Me too. Really? Mm -hmm, do you? Mm -hmm. I feel like Olaplex is great on the days I use it. Yeah. And then K18 is like, I can tell that I've been using K18 three days after I've used K18. Uh, I don't know, something with that peptide yeah. sensitivity to hair. But yeah. I guess the, the point is that there are a couple high end brands that are worth it. But in general, you're not getting a superior product just because it's sold in a salon. Mm -hmm.